The CSI franchise was such a worldwide media sensation that it's still kind of hard to believe it's over. Across four distinct shows spanning 16 years and 797 episodes, CSI entertained millions with the exploits of crack crime scene investigation teams from Las Vegas to Miami on the trails of everyone from serial bombers to Taylor Swift. During the franchise's impressive run, shows under the CSI umbrella occasionally even had legitimate claims to being the most watched in the world. With the 2016 cancellation of CSI Cyber, the franchise's storied winning streak is over for now. There's a lot of history to unpack here, and it's time to investigate the untold truth of CSI. Unreal. As fun as it is to play along with the show during its most exciting episodes, the sad truth is that the science and procedural work it depicted was rarely very accurate. Tests that in the show were conducted instantaneously can take weeks to produce results in real life. Additionally, duties that the CSI squads assume on TV are often way out of the league of your typical real-life crime scene investigator who is frequently a skilled civilian with no legal authority. Behind the scenes drama. It should come as no surprise that such a far-reaching franchise would have to endure a few off-camera flare-ups. The show had to scramble to justify a character's absence while an actor dealt with real-life issues, such as George Ede's leave of absence, which was sparked by a creative disagreement with one of the show's writers that turned ugly. At one point, Eads and co-star Georgia Fox were actually both fired from the flagship show. Meanwhile, Gary Dorden, who played Warwick Brown, left after eight years under cloudy, mutually agreed circumstances. Eads and Fox got their jobs back in short order, but Dorden wasn't as lucky, and the loss of his CSI gig started a long streak of legal troubles and bankruptcy. Killer Paychecks The longer a show's on the air, the more its stars make. Contracts negotiated while a cast is full of relative nobodies eventually come up for renegotiation. And those former nobodies are now some of the most famous faces in the world. The outcome? Actors end up making downright absurd, sky-high amounts of cash to entertain us for an hour each week. Take David Caruso, who was at one point taking home $375,000 per episode. Or Marg Helgenberger, who by 2010 was making the same amount, while relative franchise newcomer Lawrence Fishburne was getting away with $350,000. Over in New York, Gary Sinise was making $275,000 each episode. The CSI Effect one of the unexpected effects of the CSI franchise on audiences, and a classic case of fictional works having real influence in our world, was in its tendency to make jurors think they knew more than they really did when it came time to deliver decisions on criminal cases. It's a phenomenon that has come to be known as the CSI effect. When it comes to real-life crime scene investigation work, forensic work, the analyst can never be certain of a particular identification, no matter whether their field is fibers, fingerprints, or fraudulent handwriting. They use their experience and expertise to generate an expert opinion, but they can literally never be certain, only pretty sure. Well, it turns out that pretty sure isn't compelling enough for jurors swayed by the CSI effect. Carol Henderson, the director of the National Clearinghouse for Science, Technology and the Law at Florida's Stetson University College of Law, explained the problem, telling The New Yorker, I just met with the Conference of Louisiana Judges and when I asked if CSI had influenced their juries, every one of them raised their hands. People are riveted by the idea that science can solve crimes. Of course, now that all four CSI shows have been put into the TV morgue, maybe the CSI effect won't be long for this world either. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw and leave us a comment to let us know which CSI show was your favorite.